Shanidar, the flower funeral. Once upon a time in the mid-20th century, an archaeologist named Rolf Senecki found the skeletons of 10 Neanderthals, women, men, and children. What he discovered sparked a heated debate in archaeology. In this video, we'll explore whether our ancient relatives buried their dead with flowers or if bees were responsible for the blossoms near the graves, as recent studies suggest. But that's not all. We'll also delve into other fascinating cave discoveries and burial sites. Our first stop is Shandahar Cave in Iraq. Back in the mid-20th century, Rolf Selecki, our archaeology superhero, stumbled upon the remains of Neanderthals in Iraq, Kurdistan. Not just lying around, but adorned with flowers. Neanderthals were humans like us, but these were a distinct species called Homo neanderthalensis. Rolf suggests that a Neanderthal didn't just face a rockfall tragedy, but also had a proper burial with flowers and all. He says, controversially, that others were buried in formal burial rites, including one with flowers. Well, who knew Neanderthals were into floral arrangements? Now, these weren't just any flowers. We're talking about plants carefully selected and arranged. The Neanderthals had their own version of said with flowers, expressing sentiments we're still trying to decode. Maybe it was their way of saying, rest in peace, we will miss you. Some skeptics have come to argue that these flowers accidentally ended up there, courtesy of natural processes. But the floral enthusiasts stood firm, suggesting intentional placement. The real question lingers, why flowers? Was it symbolic? A prehistoric farewell gesture? Or did Neanderthals have a penchant for floral interior design? Perhaps they believed in an afterlife filled with eternal garden parties. Recent excavations have revealed the articulated upper body of an adult Neanderthal, close to the flower burial location. The first articulated Neanderthal discovered in over 25 years. Turns out this Neanderthal wasn't just casually tossed in. Stratigraphic evidence suggests an intentional burial. Well, tell you what, there are other burial sites besides Shanidar. Let's take a closer look. Next stop, La Chapelle Lausanne in France. This French hotspot unveils the mystery of Neanderthal burials. Nestled in a picturesque French landscape of the Corrèze region lies a Neanderthal version of a cozy village surrounded by nature and history. The site gained fame in the early 20th century when a Neanderthal burial was unearthed. In 1908, Amadi, Jean Boissonni, and Al Bardon discovered the skeleton of what they called the Old Man. Now, the Old Man wasn't just any Neanderthal. Our star was laid to rest in a pose that screamed, look at me, I'm ready for my close-up. Is it an intentional burial or a cosmic joke from Mother Nature? That's the debate that sparked a scientific sitcom. We have Team International Burial in one corner, arguing that the old man got the Neanderthal version of a proper send-off. In the other corner, Team Nature's Flexibility, suggesting it was all just a quirky accident. It's like a plot twist of the archaeological drama that keeps us on the edge of our excavation tools. The Chapelle Lausanne became the stage of rewriting the Neanderthal script. Our ancient relatives weren't just surviving, they were flexing their burial creativity. Now, a research team led by Cedric Bovel of the private company Archeosphere and William Rendu, a researcher at France's National Center for Scientific Research, have re-examined La Chapelle aux Saint and found evidence that the burial is authentic. Their analysis shows that the burial pit is not a natural feature and was probably dug by Neanderthals. But Rendu does not believe these burials were common. A 2011 reanalysis of the purported Neanderthal burial at Roc de Marcelle showed that it resulted from natural processes. Some of the Neanderthals in some regions, in very particular moments, made these kind of burials, Rendu says. Having burial practices suggests Neanderthals possessed spiritual beliefs, but what these beliefs may have been is anybody's guess. Let's take a short train ride to Cima de los Huesos, Spain. Cima de los Huesos, or in English, the Pit of Bones, because who said ancient burials couldn't have a touch of drama, is like the rock star 
of archaeological sites nestled deep within the Atapurka Mountains. This cave gave Neanderthals a starring role in what would be the Paleolithic version of a blockbuster. Back in the 80s, a team of intrepid archaeologists stumbled upon a jackpot, hundreds of ancient bones. The bones were tossed around like confetti from a prehistoric celebration, hundreds of them, all piled up like a Neanderthal bone art installation. Why are there so many bones? Was it a prehistoric pit party or the Neanderthal version of Murray Kondo's decluttering spree? Archaeologists are still scratching their heads. This cave's legacy is like the Paleolithic version of a suspense thriller. It challenges our understanding of Neanderthal behavior and raises the questions that keep archaeologists awake at night. It's like the cave is whispering, guess what happened here? I bet you can't figure it out. Now, let's fly down to the Kebara Cave in Israel. Nestled in the landscapes of Israel, Kebara Cave is where our ancient relatives decided to settle down, leaving behind a trove of artifacts and a few surprises. They shared their space not only with each other, but also with an alarming number of eagles. The most significant discovery at Kebara Cave was Kebara II in 1982, the most complete postcranial Neanderthal skeleton. Nicknamed Moshi and dating to circa 60,000 BP, the skeleton preserved a large part of one's individual torso, vertebral, column, ribs, and pelvis. The question for whether Neanderthals mourned for and buried their dead has been a fascinating puzzle in the archaeological world, and recent discoveries have shed light on this aspect of their behavior. New excavations. Neanderthals are Homo sapiens' closest known relatives, and today we know we rubbed shoulders with them for thousands of years, up until the very end of their long reign some 40,000 years ago. Most researchers see no reason to believe that our species didn't get along with each other back then. Yet, we haven't been very kind to Neanderthals since their remains were first unearthed in the 19th century, often calling them lumbering dimwits or worse. Even today, their name is sometimes hurled at misbehaving members of our species, though there is no evidence they engaged in any kind of prehistoric hooliganism. Well, with one exception perhaps, what they did in Brunichel Cave in southwestern France would certainly be frowned upon today. Hundreds of intentionally broken stalagmites were found there, arranged in two large ellipsoid structures and several smaller stacks. During a time when, as researchers confirmed in 2016, only Neanderthals were roaming Europe. No one knows what these structures were for, but they suggest a tendency towards creativity and perhaps even symbolism. No other structures of this kind have so far been discovered, but there have been many additional hints that Neanderthal mines were occupied with things many researchers did not expect, says archaeologist April Noli of the University of Victoria in Canada. The author of the 2021 book, Growing Up in the Ice Age, Noel outlines the most exciting new discoveries in a 2023 article, Rethinking Neanderthals, in the annual review of Anthropology. In the last 10 years, things have changed quite dramatically, she says. I never thought we'd have the wide range of information about their lives that we do now. In addition to many new fossil discoveries, new methods for analyzing ancient biological molecules have allowed researchers to examine ancient DNA and proteins that they didn't even know still persisted. Some of the Neanderthal artifacts discovered were very particular in nature. Bits of twisted wood fiber attached to a modified stone flake found in France in 2017 suggests that at least some Neanderthals knew how to make rope, for example, which may have opened the door to fashioning other objects like clothes, bags, nets, and mats. There's also evidence that Neanderthals were heating birch bark to make adhesives, which is no mean feat. A few researchers have recently tried to do the same in similar circumstances, said Noel, and it's a lot harder than most people thought. Neanderthals, our nearest biological relatives in an evolutionary sense, have been judged as primitive, violent, and cannibalistic, but really, much still remains to be discovered about their behavior and beliefs.